must project. Well, I don't have much to project. Welcome to Anime Milwaukee 2012. I hope all of you are having a wonderful time so far. Are you? Is it better than last year? Oh. I won't see you after tonight. The truth is, we just don't have the funding to buy real swords. So, and we need you to live till Sunday, so you're going to stay here with us. see an audience out there. since there's nothing better to convey the beauty of the sword or of the Japanese culture than through the beautiful folk tales and the stories that they present. So we'll start off with the first one. One of the things about Iaido is we are an art form that is handed down verbally. So our senseis teach us face to face. You can buy videos and you can buy books but everybody who does the books and the videos will put in purposeful mistakes. So the first time someone who has learned it the old way sees you, they'll go, mm, you should have gone to a teacher, and then they'll help you. So we're going to start off with a story about a student and a teacher. Once a long time ago, there was a young man who wanted to study the art of the sword. And so he went to one of the greatest swordsmen of his day. He approached him and he asked, the sensei, would you take me on as a student? And the teacher said he would. The young man asked, how long will it take me to become a master? And the teacher said, 10 years. And the young man said, what if I practice very hard every day? And the master said, 20 years. What if I practice every minute? It absorbs my life. And the master said, 30 years. And the young man said, why does it keep getting more every time I ask you? And he said, if you're in such a rush to get somewhere, you'll never get there. And so the young man became his disciple. But he was not allowed to touch a sword, not even a wooden sword. Instead, he became a servant. 
He cooked the sensei's meals. He washed his clothes. He cleaned his house. He was nothing more than a servant. One day, when he was cooking, the sensei came up behind him and hit him. The young man turned around and there was the sensei with a stick. The next day he was chopping wood. The sensei came up behind him and attacked him again. The next day he was picking berries and fruit for the sensei's meal. And the sensei came up behind him and did him again. And so it was that the young man was constantly attacked by the master. But soon, the young man became very good at dodging. And so it was that eventually, the young man was given a poker by his master. And now, every time the master attacked, the young man had to defend himself. He never knew when his master would attack. He had to keep that poking to the side constantly. No matter what he was doing, even asleep, the master would attack him. And soon, the blocks became parries, and the parries led to counterattacks. So many years of this, he was beating his master. And finally, his master came to him one day and said, You're finished. You're done. You can leave. You can go and you can teach. Will you become a master? And the young man said, But I've never touched a steel sword. And the sensei smiled and said, You don't have to. You've learned everything you need. And that's the story of the teacher and the student. Now, just so you know, Mark was being hit with a bamboo shinai covered in leather. It still hurts, but this way we don't leave any marks on his body. So, you know, in case something happens later, the police won't come looking for us. <laughs> Much easier than that. And now, Josh and Ellen are going to present a piece um, incorporating a kata of the nunchaku. And dance.
I love doing that piece. We were practicing, we had to have a cube, so if we went too far that way. Josh wouldn't fall off the stage. But Josh didn't realize I wasn't going to give him the cue. <laughs> way, so, just kidding. We're going to do uh, several workshops over the course of the weekend. We're doing one in Sete Kata tomorrow. We're doing one on Boken. That's what Josh and is doing. Josh is doing one on Kokujutsu, the different weapons from Okinawa, as he did with Nunchuck, he did bow, sai, all the weapons. Then we'll be doing one on stage combat versus real combat. And for that, we not only have Josh, who has done the um, choreography for uh, two movies, Press Start, one of them. And uh, if you ever saw Press Start, you might recognize Josh, except he was blonde in that. And clean shaven, I think. Well, he is blonde, but he had a lot more hair in that one. And uh, he, um, he will be talking about it from his point of view. Um, Dan Sang will be talking about it from a cinema, uh, cinematography point of view. And Alan um, Stafford will be talking about it from a dance choreographer's point of view, movement. So um, you can get some good point of views about stage combat. And I'll be talking about real combat, because I'm used to this on stage. So, we're going to do one more piece for you, and this is another story. And this is a very unusual story because we talk constantly about zanshin. We talk about the idea that the samurai would almost acquire a sixth sense. Um, it's very hard to explain. I guess it's a perfect sense of awareness, knowing where you are at all times, knowing your environment, being aware. So you, you're walking down the road and you see a clump of bushes, you automatically walk to the other side of the road, other side of the road to avoid being too close to that, too close to an ambush, those kind of things. It's automatic, it's an awareness. And this story talks about that awareness. Once a long time ago, there was a samurai followed by his servant, walking through a garden. Now the samurai was taking in the beauty of the day, the smell of the blossoms, the colors of the flowers. He was distracted. And as they walked, his servant, a young maiden, she thought to herself, I've never seen my master so vulnerable. I've never seen him so unaware of who he is. Even I, a girl, a young girl, I could kill him if I wanted to. And just at that moment, the samurai turned. He drew his sword, but when he saw, there was no one behind him but his servant. He apologized. He sheathed his katana, and they continued on their walk through the garden, but this time, he no longer appreciated the beauty around him. He was concerned. He was concerned that he had lost his awareness, his ability to stay in the moment. Later on that evening, he was sitting in his room, contemplating what had happened that day. When his servant came in, and she knelt before him, and she told him the story how it was she who had thought to herself that he was vulnerable, that even she could slay him in that moment because he was distracted by the beauty around him. And when she said that, he bowed to her and thanked her because now he knew he had not lost his zanshin, he had not lost his awareness, he knew that he still lived in the moment, he still lived as a warrior. And that's the story of the samurai and his servant. Thank you very much.